Today I'm going to teach you the basics of using the Vim text editor so that you can be more productive and more effective when writing your code. Vim was released in 1991 and is an improvement to its predecessor, VI, which has been around since the 1970s. It is so useful and versatile that it is included in most Mac and Linux systems by default, which means that if you're ever logging into a remote server and need to edit a file, there's a 99% chance you'll be able to use Vim as that server is most likely running Linux. Vim is completely keyboard based, so you can forget about your mouse and keep your hands on your keyboard. It's one of the reasons it can help you be more effective. Learning Vim does take some time, effort, and practice, and it can be a little painful at first, but I promise you, if you stick to it, it'll be worth it. Once you get the hang of it, writing code starts to feel like a natural extension to your thought process which for me is a big win in comparison to other text editors. My name is Josian Martinez and I'm a web developer living in Puerto Rico. Thanks for joining me today. Stick around for the rest of this video to learn all about the basics and how to get started. All right, so what you're looking at here is a terminal window on my machine. The first thing we're, learn we're gonna learn how to do is how to open up a new file, Vim. To do that, we type out vim and the name of the new file, newvimfile.txt. So now we're inside Vim. On the bottom left corner, it says normal. That's because Vim has three major modes, normal mode, insert mode, and visual mode. When you're in normal mode, anything you type on your keyboard is a command you're executing. So to exit Vim, what we do is we type colon Q, which is short for quit. Great. All right, so we're gonna open up this file again by typing vim new vim file.txt. So you're probably wondering now, how do I make changes to this file? To do that, we have to make use of Vim's insert mode. We type I to get into insert mode, and now we can make changes to the file. Hello, I'm writing inside Vim. So you're probably wondering, how do I save these changes? To do that, we hit the escape key to go back to normal mode, and we type colon W. When we do that and I hit enter, now we've saved our changes. We can also write our changes and quit Vim at the same time, colon WQ. Awesome. So now you know how to open up a file, make changes to it, save those changes, and then exit the file. Here's where things start to get a little more interesting. What we're gonna do is open up a JavaScript file I have on my machine and play around with Vim so I can show you some other things you can do. Let's open up the file, vim shop.js. So this is my JavaScript file. Something you might be wondering now is how do I move around inside Vim if I can't use the mouse? If I were to take my mouse and I try to click around here, nothing really happens, I can't move the cursor. One of the things you can do is use L, H, J, and K. L and H are to go right and left. So if I do L, if I hit L a couple times, I'm moving to the right. If I do H, I'll go to the left. If I do J, I'll go down. If I do K, I'll go up. This does take some getting used to. It took me a couple, couple weeks to get used to using these keys. Um, but after you, after you get used to it, it kind of becomes automatic. You can combine these keys with numbers. So you can do 5J to move five lines down because you use J to go down. If I do 5J, then I'm moving five lines down. If I do 5K, which is to go up, I'll, do, I'll move five lines up. So 5K, I'm moving five lines up. Other useful movement commands include the dollar sign for moving to the end of the current line. So if I do dollar sign, I move to the end of the current line. Zero is to move to the beginning of the current line. So there I use zero, I move to the beginning of the current line. W moves, moves you forward a word at a time. So W moves you forward a word. If I use E, I'll, you'll move forward a word, but the cursor will be moving um, to the end of every word. So I do E and I'm moving to the end of every word. B is to move back um, to the beginning of the previous word. So B is moving back. So B is the opposite of doing W. GG is a, is a good one. That moves you to the first line in, in the file. So if I do GG, I'm moving to the first line in the file. If I do capital G, I move to the um, final line in the file. So GG, first line, capital G, um, final line. If I combine a number with capital G or GG, 
That'll take me to a specific line in the file. If I want to go, for example, to line 25 in this file, I'll do 25G, and as you can see, um, I have my line numbers turned on and my cursor is now in line 25. So now what you can do is combine these movement commands to get you to where you want to be in your file and then enter insert mode and write some text. If I want to move five lines up and then write some text, I'm going to do 5K to move five lines up and then hit the I key to enter insert mode and then I can write some text. If I want to undo that change because it was a mistake, then I have to hit the escape key to go back to normal mode, type the U key, to, which stands for undo. So if I type U, I'll undo my change. And if I want to redo that change, I'll type control R, which is for redo. So U is for undo, control R is for redo. I'll undo that with U again. Now that you know how to move around and also enter insert mode to make some changes, Let's learn about some other important commands that will help you make changes to the file. If you use capital A, which stands for append, you'll go to the end of the current line and then enter insert mode to write some text. Let's do capital A by doing shift A. And now we're in insert mode at the end of the current line and I can write some text. All right, let's hit escape to go back to normal mode and U to undo that. Now let's type lowercase o to append to open a new line below the current line. So if I do lowercase o, I, I added a new line below the current line and I'm now in insert mode and I can write some text. All right, let's escape to go back to normal mode, u to undo. We can do the same thing but opening a new line above the current line by doing capital O. So if I do capital O, I go above the current line, I'm now in insert mode, I can write some text, let's do escape, back to normal mode, um, U to undo. On top of that, we can use D and C. D stands for delete and C stands for change. So if we do DD, that'll delete the whole current line. So DD deletes the whole current line, let's undo that. If I do CC, it will delete the whole current line and enter insert mode. So if I do CC, I just deleted the line, I'm in insert mode, and now I can write some text replacing the, replacing what was originally in that line. All right, let's escape, undo that. Awesome, so that's DD and CC. You can use D and C in other really cool ways um, to delete, delete stuff on your file or change things. For example, if I type D and then I, I will stand for inside or inner. And then curly brace, what that means is delete inner curly brace. That will delete everything that's inside the closest surrounding curly brace to my cursor. So if I'm in line 20 and I, and I do D, I, curly brace, it deletes everything that was inside those surround those nearest nearest surrounding curly braces, which I think is really cool. All right, let's undo that. Um, we can do the same thing with C. So C, I, curly brace, and now we deleted everything inside the curly brace and we're in insert mode and can make some changes. So let's write some text here, um, escape, to go back to normal mode, U, to undo that. Um, you can do the same thing with parentheses and with and, and with brackets. For example, if I'm in here and I also do, so I'm in line 21, and instead of doing di curly brace, I can do di parentheses, di parentheses, and it deleted everything that was inside the nearest closing uh, parentheses, which is which can come really handy when you're dealing with code and you want to delete things inside parentheses, or curly braces, brackets, which happens uh, really often. All right, so let's undo that change. So lowercase u, awesome. Another really cool thing you can do is you can do is you can use the dot key to repeat an action. So for example, if I'm in line 20 and I do um, dd to, to delete that line, so dd, delete that line, 
and I want to repeat that, like uh, let's say three times, um, I can do three dot and I just repeated my delete action three times and I deleted the following three lines on the file, which is also really cool. So you can do, uh, you can use dot with anything, anything that, any action that you take on the file, um, you can use dot to repeat that action and if you put a number behind the dot, then it will repeat the action that number of times. All right, let's undo that change. Cool. Now what I'm gonna show you guys is how to copy and paste text, which is also a really common occurrence when you're writing code. If you want to copy text, um, the one of the easiest ways you can do this is by going into visual mode. So if I type V, that will take me inside Vim's visual mode. It's like going inside insert mode, but now you're in visual mode. What happens here when you're in visual mode is that when you move around um, the file, so using H or L or J or K, um, you'll be highlighting text in the file. If you use Y, which stands for yank, and is the equivalent of copy, you'll, you'll copy the text that you've highlighted. So right now, if I do, if I hit the Y key, I'll be copying the text from line 20 to 25. Let's do Y. I just copied that text. Um, and to show you that I've copied it, let's paste it. To paste, you can use the P key. And as you can see, we're back in normal mode. You don't have to be in visual mode to do this. Um, let's go down a couple lines. And then here in line 26, we'll hit the P key, which is short for paste. Um, and we'll paste the text we had uh, copied in visual mode. All right, so the final thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to search and then how to search and replace. To search through the whole file for a given string, what you do is you type forward slash while you're, while you're in normal mode. Um, so now we type forward slash and the string that we're looking for. So let's say we're looking for product. Um, let's type here product, so slash product. If I hit enter, um, now Vim will take my cursor to the next closest occurrence of that uh, string. So as you can see, I'm on line 28. I'm in a, a product string. If I hit N, which stands for next, I'll go to the next instance of product. So I'll hit N, and now I'm in line 41. As you can see, another instance of product. Let's hit N again, I'm um, in line 42, and another instance of product. If I hit Shift N, I'll go in the opposite direction and go to the previous occurrence of the, of the string. So if I, if I do Shift N, I go back to line 41 to product, Shift N again, back to line 28 to the previous product. Awesome. So that's how you look for a string and then uh, go through the results forward and backward with lowercase n and uppercase n. To search and replace, what you have to do is type colon percent s slash the string that you're looking for. So let's do product again and then slash the string that will replace it. Let's replace product with my products. Now I hit enter and all the all the occurrences of product in the file have been changed to my products. As you can see in line 70, it now says my products, it originally used to say product. Um, so yeah, that's how you do um, search and replace in Vim. All right, so that's it for my intro to Vim and how to get started. There is so much more to learn. I've included a link to a cheat sheet in the description with some very useful Vim commands and I recommend using the Vim Tutor program which will help guide you through the basics. If you already have Vim installed, all you need to do is open up a new terminal window, type out Vim Tutor, and that will get it started. If you'd like another tutorial outlining more advanced concepts, a guide on how to configure Vim like I have, or have any other suggestions for future YouTube videos, Please let me know in the comments below and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with more content like this.